Um, let's go into the remake of what is my favorite game of all time, uh, Resident Evil 4. So Video Games Chronicle has reported that the studio behind the Resident Evil 3 remake, uh, M2, has had their role in the upcoming 4 remake significantly reduced, with Capcom Division 1 taking over production. Uh, this comes on the heels of disagreements bet between the developer and publisher, with Capcom desiring greater changes from the original game, and M2 aiming for a one-to-one -one remake. Uh, the remake is being partially rebooted and is now targeting a 2023 release. So it's a bit further out than people were initially speculating. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and also, just a heads up, all of this was uh was cons was uh, pr uh a bunch of resident evil leakers came out and pretty much confirmed this so yeah from what they've heard so then, from their sources is that this is all true so then my my curiosity is that because you know we've been saying that we've had a resident evil game pretty much every year for a while now and uh which means since resident evil 8 comes out in a few months and um resident evil 4 remake comes out in 2023 we might not actually get a resident evil game in 2022 i'd be uh, fine with that let it breathe a bit yeah, over veronica I, remake I let's would, go <laughs> I, I, I would be okay with that and the one thing that people listening need to understand the reason why this is happening is because um the resident evil 2 remake the majority of the people really really liked it uh, there was a very tiny outspoken few who claimed that it diverged too much from the original which when you think about it it kind of didn't um and then when resident evil 3 came out that that very small min minority of people became a very loud vocal minority of people because there was a bunch of things in resident evil 3 in the remake that they took out that was in the yeah. original like, like the, the clock set, tower set, level set pieces the whole uh choice yeah. system because for those who don't know Resident Evil 3 had a sort of choice system to it where whenever Nemesis attacked the screen would like do this like 90s fade to white and then it gave mm -hmm. you two yeah. options you could either fight him or you would run run away um and people I personally didn't mind that not coming back there's a bunch of people who were very angry that didn't come back and like you guys mentioned the fact that the clock tower was completely taken out yeah the, there were but, multiple locations that you never even fully get to explore or were just completely taken out but also people have to keep in mind that this was a very loud vocal minority of people like it wasn't like a huge audience of old school Resident Evil fans. It was a very small, small vocal min minority. I feel like even and extrapolating so, beyond that is that mm, the general consensus would be that like two remake is absolutely fantastic and three yeah. is a damn good game, but it's lacking a lot of the production value of two. And there's a, just generally more missteps in there than, than it, two. It just it, it unfortunately felt like three was an afterthought for them. Like, oh, I guess we, we did two, so we have to do three. All right, it's let's very just hard. It I can't speak right now because yeah. I adored the remake of three. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I absolutely no, I, did, I, but I just like speaking comparatively. I many issues. I just, I'm, I'm a salty yeah. snail because yeah. it could have been better, you know? If you're a salty snail, then shouldn't you be dead? Uh, wow. She has a point. <laughs> <laughs> Confused. Confused. Sorry, sorry, point, point. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, doesn't that kill snails? Gary um, would be offended. Yeah. I guess building off of the divergences, uh, to me, uh, I, I would say like absolutely two and three needed like a remake. Like even if they were one to one remakes, they're, they're PS one games. They're like in desperate need of it. Uh, but they still hold up, which is why people wanted Capcom to like port over the the original three. I would say yes really, in really terms badly. of preservation, but I would say two and three are effectively pretty damn good replacements instead of. Oh no, they are. Uh, but they in the are, case of but I four, think the original held up. Yeah, in the case of four, I would say it's already a damn perfect game. Like there's been HD um, remakes or just ports, whatever, over the years, and I don't want a one-to-one -one remake of four because that game's already Me perfect neither. as is. So just go fucking crazy, go and add stuff, take stuff out, whatever you need to do. I don't um, know, if they, I know they're what? for a fact they're not going to do tank controls because that's not what. Uh, contemporary players are accustomed to um, but so, if, if they take out the tank controls they need to fundamentally change everything about the environment and the way that enemies are able to attack you because the entire original game is 
um, is designed around that limitation. Well, technically, so I, they already know how to do that from the two and three remake because two and three were 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 built on tank controls, and enemies attacked you a specific way in the original games. While in this one, it's completely different. Yeah, but this is also different in that. Um, in terms of enemy speed, because they're not just zombies lumbering at you. They have weapons. They can sprint and whatnot. So if they add more abilities to them, it would bring it more in line to what that original challenge would be. Like if they if they did their regular slow lumber, or I guess like initial sprint, then lumber towards you, it, it wouldn't be the same if you're able to duke around and everything. So um, I would I would say they need to increase their aggression overall. Also, uh, we ha- I think it's important to remember that after. Resident Evil 7 came out. Um, Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake followed, and they took a lot of uh, inspirations from, um, or a lot of, not inspirations, but a lot of just mechanics that they used in Resident Evil 7 uh, towards the remakes. So what we're probably going to see specifically, they're using a lot of similar assets that they that they are familiar with from Resident Evil 4. We're probably going to see Resident Evil 8. Uh, mechanics implemented into Resident Evil 4, the remake. That's why we're not going to be seeing it until 2023 because it's going to take a while. I didn't even know that it was such a meme, but uh, ever since Resident Evil 7 brought in the bolt cutters, they've been in every single game since then, and then they're in... Yeah. So so. A lot of the Resident Evil 2's assets were the exact same assets that were in 7, including the uh, opening up the call box using the knife with the exact same call box the exact same knife and the exact same uh animation that ethan does yep opening it so they took a lot from resident evil 7 but that's not a bad thing because that just helped them make the game faster because it's like oh we have all these assets that are just sitting here yeah it's more just like a joking thing versus like she's like oh they're being lazy just like i don't give a shit i i I like the bolt cutters it's nice and red you have the asset it it actually makes it feel like the same universe and that's in that sense, yeah, you know, adore yeah, totally. asset reuse. Yeah, I love it every single time I see it. And I want to see it more. Go crazy with it. Do him a fucking Go crazy with it. mask or something. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it for the Resident Evil stuff. So we can go ahead and jump into the. Or does anyone else have anything specific they want to talk about in regards to Resident Evil? Uh, I'm just glad that we're getting a uh, mainline Resident Evil this year. And if oh, we, uh, really, would... really thing for everybody saying that w- we don't need a Resident Evil in a in a year that we're dealing with a pandemic. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut up. Like, uh, video games I, are comforting in general. Um, yeah, I mean, I get it that when Resident Evil Three launched last year and its and its opening was like using like live action like uh, footage that they shot for that. It's like, oh, there's a pandemic running through raccoon. Like, yeah, that shit was like, okay, this is just a little bit. But it's like at the same time, like Resident Evil's pandemic. We don't have vampires and hot eight foot tall vampire <laughs> ladies walking <laughs> around. Shut up. <laughs> like, um, and I, I will say this much. Uh, I. I mean, this is not based on any sort of uh, proof or anything. Just a just an idea in my head that if if we do if we do happen to get a Resident Evil game in 2022, it most likely will be Revelations Three. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, I like this. I really like the direction Sorry, weirdness totally. they do in terms of the story for Revelations. But I mean, I, I would really have to go back and and revisit one and two. But the the way that they play, just in terms of like, in, in, just in terms of gameplay, it just feels like knockoff Resident Evil. So I hope they they give it the production value that the series pr- basically deserves. Mesa, what are you trying to say, my dude? Oh, I was just I was just making a joke about uh, RE Seven being Resident Evil Revelations Three. <laughs> I mean, you're kind of not wrong. The uh, Revelations game, more wise, have always taken place in in between stuff. Mm-hmm. And they've kind of been like, oh, what has this character been doing in between these two games? Here is mm-hmm. our explanation yeah. for that. Yeah. And it's like, to be completely fair, I'm 100% down to have a Revelations 3. Just I would personally have to see what characters that it covers. Because the one thing that, that I like about the Revelations games is they bring back characters. Not Barry, like Burton, one. 
but well yeah but 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 like they bring back characters that we haven't seen in they need in to bring back while. rebecca chambers they 100 uh, she was in the movie back. and she just sat there and cried all the, all the time okay but like depressing. okay that's true she's not really a, a field operative anymore she's a scientist yeah, um, let her let her be a scientist. Anna. Fine, Billy Just Cohen. Bring, bring back Billy yeah, Cohen. Bring back my man, God, plot, Capcom. Plot, I know he's out there. He's doing something. Bring him back. Plot Please. twist for Resident Evil Eight: uh, Chris kills Ethan almost immediately. Barry Burton bursts in. He's the main character. Chris turns into a werewolf. Barry Burton pulls out his giant handgun, his hand cannon, and blows his head off. Boom. The end. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> And then Joe, and then Joe walks in. Man, Barry, you were almost dog food. And then, <laughs> and then, then Barry kneels down and, and he touches Werewolf Chris. He says, "Is this, this Chris's is, blood? Is, is this Chris's blood?" <laughs> I, I, I have, I have a tiny little. Oh no! But I can't. But I can't. Like, um. uh, Aw, that's there so we go. Oh, they are. There is, there is the boys. Oh, did you end up? So, I actually do have a question for Sarah. Did you end up oh. snagging the collector's edition? I did. It, Congrats. It, thank you. It was a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be. It was like two hundred and ten dollars. Yes. It was like. Yep. Ugh, I was going. I was going to, but I'm going to get it on Steam anyway. So I'm like, eh. It is also, a GameStop exclusive, like all the other ones have been. I'm not so, giving them another cent of my money, so I wasn't going to pay that but, for that anyway. Well, like, if you can't tell up here, I have the Leon from the Resident Evil Two Collector's Edition, and I have Joe from the Three Collector's Edition, and these are very nice statues for how much they were. That's why the. I'm curious about why the Resident Evil 8 one is like $210 when these were like 150 because I'm wondering like, is the Chris statue bigger? Is it like more detailed? Like, I don't know, but I am going to. Well, put also, you have to, you have to take into account that, um, well, wait, no. Cause the regular edition of, of Resident Evil 8 is $60 on PS5, right? Yes. Okay. So it's not like a price. Yeah, they're right not doing the price hike quite. So yet. that's yeah. why I'm curious about why it's more expensive. I do have a crazy theory though that the that the Chris statue that they're showing us isn't the statue that we're getting, and we're going to get like a werewolf Chris statue. I would say they're not like showing anything, or it's just that generic like him just standing there. It's a dumb theory. I get it. I understand. But just the but to me, it's the fact that it's like fifty dollars more expensive when it's basically the same. So apparently the same statue as like these. The, but wouldn't that be the only reason I would say that's a bad theory is because that opens them up for legal action for falsely yeah, displaying a, what you're going to be purchasing. Well, also that's a well, that would be a major there spoiler too. Cutscenes in games where they change stuff to hide. Well, that, that's cutscenes versus like a physical product you're purchasing. But that doesn't make any sense. I digress. To me, but okay. Yeah. 